Benny, uh, we've got your setup. You're pretty experienced uh, rider. Let's start at, with the fin. Um, tell me what board sizes you have and what fins you run on those boards. Um, in Fred Ventura here, I have my 97 and my 117 Proton. And um, I run 32, 33 in my small board, 97 liters. And my uh, medium board, which is uh, 117, I run a 36, 37, 38 for lightweight. And do you change the rake and the angle of fins according to the board or the conditions? Um, I do change the rake for condition-wise when I want my nose a little higher when it's uh, when it's like steep chop. So I, I will rake the fin a little more and then wanna, when it's flat I'll rake a little bit less and have a bit more power. And um, perfect. What about foot straps then? So stance first. Do you, um, you know, you have the same stance across the boards? Do you change it? Um, well, I, I'm not a person who measures the stance, but I, I go for feeling. So I'll put them where I think they should be, and then from there I will change it to where I think they, or where they will have to go. Is it, why would you move them back? Why would you move them out? Uh, if you feel a bit sticky, you move them a bit back, and if you want, if you want to ride a little bit more on the fin, you move them back. If you feel like you're flying too much, you move them a little bit forward. Cool. And then uh, what about your feet? Like some guys like them really tight, some loose, some tight back, loose front. What do you do? I'm, uh, I'm right in the middle, I think. Okay, let's have a look what this board is. Tell me, how's that? It's like um, toes just past, so I can really hold the, the foot strap. Yeah, and the, and the front one? The front one will be exactly the same. Yeah, and you always do this on all the boards, big, small, you have them the same as that? Pretty much, yeah. Okay. All the boards are the same. Um, deck plate, uh, constant position or are you always tweaking the deck plate? You're always moving it forward, back? Um, I'm moving it forward and backwards with the, with the conditions. And again, what's the thinking? I mean, do you have a sweet spot um, on all of the boards or is it always something you move? Well, the sweet spot is the middle, usually. Where it is now. Yeah. And when it gets really rough and gnarly and I really want to hold everything down, I, I will put it forward. And for example, for 7.0, bigger sail, which is heavier on the board, I will move it back. Um, and then uh, let's move on to the rig. You know, explain how you go through the downhill process when you're, you're, you're starting out with a new sail. Usually when I get a new sail, there's a, there's a, there's a fret on the sail, yeah. so a little mark. I will start with that and usually I pull just a little bit more. And then, uh, what does that do? Like, what would you? Why would you then add even more, or, to, or make less, if depending on the feeling? What's the feeling? Well, it depends on your board and the feeling you want to get. So, if you pull more downhill, your board will be looser and more flighty. So, when you pull less downhill, you will have a bit more power in the sail, but your board will also be a little bit more down and sticky. Okay. Okay, and that's perfect. So then boom height, is that another thing that you keep the same the whole time or do you move it around? I move it around. I, I just go by feeling and um, basically when it's gnarly and, and choppy, I'll move it down and when it gets a little lighter, I'll just move it up to get a bit more freedom. Okay, perfect. Um, out haul, adjustable. Do you, uh, you don't adjust in a race, but what's the feeling you go for with the out haul when you're, you know, I guess when you start a race, you set it a certain way, yeah? Basically, I'm out all, almost always set the same, but uh, it's just in case the wind drops completely or picks up comple uh, radically for a race, then I can either pull it or let it go. For Perfect. And the same, do you have adjustable harness lines? Do you, again, do you keep them the same length or do is that part of the tweaking, tuning? Um, usually I keep them the same for every sail size, but when it gets gnarly, they go a little longer. Okay. What length are they? I mean, incidentally, do you know? These are 30 to 36, and I ride them around 34. Okay. With a waist harness, obviously. With yeah. a waist harness. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, and then finally, uh, masks. Are you a, a big collector of masks, or have you just happily, do you choose stiffer ones, softer ones? What do they do? Tell me. I have a few masks. I don't have a huge collection, but um, I measure all my masks. I keep the ones I really like from the year before, and... Uh, well, on this sail, for for example, I use a skinny wave mast. Really? Okay, and what's the advantage of that? Uh, it makes the rig a little softer, more forgiving, and uh, well, this rig has a lot of power uh, by itself, so it's nice to have it a little bit more forgiving. Okay. 
Does that actually affect the weight as well? Does it make it lighter or not really? Um, no, the wall thickness is thicker from a skinny mask, so in the end the weight is not a okay. not a big difference. Yeah, okay. And battens, do you are you a batten player? Do you want and if you do play, what what is it that you look for and what do you change? Um, I don't touch the battens too much on the production sales because I played with it the year before with the with the development, so I know what's in there and I I know it works well. If I really need to change something, I will will do it, but it depends on the, the size and... And what, I mean, I guess it depends on a sale, but you get a sale and then you work out the, 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 the most suitable battens, yeah? So yeah, correct. So and what is it? Glass does one thing, carbon... Uh, yeah, one batten needs to be glass. If the batten blows up when you're sailing, you need to put a carbon one. And it's like, just go by looking at the sail and feeling. That's it, man. Perfect. Cheers. Good job. So thanks for watching windsurfing.tv. Thanks to all the members. You are making the channel happen. I know I keep saying it like, yeah, Ben, boring, but you really are. Uh, 20 quid, 30 quid, 50 quid, whatever you can spare for the whole year to support Windsurfing TV, it definitely helps. Uh, and like I said, you are making this channel happen. We've got lots in the pipeline um, and we're looking forward to it. So subscribe as well on YouTube. We're over 20,000 subscribers now. Click on the videos up here, over here. Uh, uh, and join us uh, for more action on the channel.